Hello, everyone. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to the Global Press Conference for AIR, which will be in theaters April 5th. First, I want to go ahead and welcome our panel. We have Alex Cove. We sorry, Alex Convery. Also, we have I'm sorry, Marlon Wayans, Julius Tenen, Miss Viola Davis, and producer star screenwriter Matt Damon. Hello, everyone. I want to welcome you all. I will have to start. I'm sorry, Matt. I know you have a lot of. Uh, Rolls on this one, but I have to start with Miss Viola Davis yeah, because, no, no <laughs> <laughs> ma'am, I will have to say from goat to goat, that's kind of a cool call to be like the greatest basketball player in the world. Says only you can play his mom. Talk about that phone call <laughs> when you found well, out. Well, I didn't get that phone call. <laughs> you didn't get it, I just but you got the it. trickle down message. <laughs> Listen, I wish it were my style to like get into best great. It, it doesn't help me at all. You already know. <laughs> but it is flattering because I do go in with a sense of do I belong, imposter syndrome. So it's nice to feel wanted. But then the next thought is now I got to step into the role. <laughs> yes. And if you watch videos on, um, you know, Dolores Jordan, she is a study in Zen neutrality. The woman is very, very steady. Mm -hmm. and quiet you know I mean I would imagine that even when she gets mad she's probably very 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 steady <laughs> 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 so um to really just sort of um, envelop that spirit and everything was a challenge for me because I'm I'm the woman who always has a chip on her shoulder I go in bombastic you know so um it was both Flattering, challenging, and then just a joy to work with Matt and Ben and all these terrific actors. It, me and Julia still talk about it to this day. You know? <laughs> One of the greatest experiences. Yeah, I definitely want to talk about it. Again, a true, everybody just comes and joins and makes, I feel this, a family affair. But I think it comes from Matt, you and Ben, just the way you guys went about assembling this group of folks, the folks you chose to do it, and then also how you guys set about with the artist equity. But talk about all of those sort of, I, I would say, not competing, but very high priorities that you had for this film, honoring the sports, honoring the artists that you brought along to it, honoring Michael Jordan, and how you guys balanced that as you were trying to tell this story. Oh, and you know, star in it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Well, let's see. Uh, it, it all started with the script, really. Um, and that's down to Alex uh, at the end of the table. It, we, but I just thought it was so great, and I didn't, I didn't know the story, and um, and so, and then it was kind of step by step, I'd say, because the first step was uh, getting the blessing of Michael Jordan to even, because you know, before we got too excited, Ben said we should go see him, and I, my kids were up to something in New York that, and I couldn't go, so Ben went to Florida to see Michael, and. And, and Michael said, no, it's fine if you make the movie. It's okay with me. Um, but Ben said, well, what I really would love to know is what's most important to you. And mm -hmm. it was out of that meeting that he said, George Raveling, uh, Howard White. And then he started to talk about his mom. And Ben called me afterwards and, and said it was, you know, Michael's a very intimidating guy. Yeah, he told us. He told us about it. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. He's, a, he's, a, he's an intimidating guy. And, you know, and he's an icon and he's all of these things and he has all this meaning for all of us. But, um, but, but he, he, Ben said he had this look on his, on his face when he spoke about his mom that I'd never seen before. And so, so that was the, um, we felt like we okay well now we know what the movie is right we th and he he said the only bad news is we have to get Viola Davis if we don't get Viola Davis we can't make the movie so <laughs> so that was when we we started uh thinking about how to uh, expand Dolores um and uh and that's really you know one of the great things about you know this cast is that everybody is really a filmmaker Mm -hmm. You know, um, these two sitting next to me are A-list producers, mm. right? Um, the Woman King, anybody? Yeah, no? I was just going to say. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Marlon, Chris, you know, they're writers as well as actors. You know, they're filmmakers. And Jason Bateman's a director, producer, you know. So, so, and that's what we, like, we really lean on our actors. And part of our process has always been from Goodwill Hunting all the way till today. It's like, 
you know, lean into what your actor's bringing, and, and the actor always is in the moment and always knows, and we, and we had these conversations with Viola, like, if it doesn't feel right, like, what, what do you feel like here? Yeah. You know, because it's all, that's always the way to the best scene. Yeah. One of the things I loved about this is it's, it's subtle with all of the very big statements that it makes, and one of my favorite subtle moments was when you walk into the Jordan's home, and, and Julius, your character, James, he greets him, and he's just like, and, sh and he just lets him walk on back to where Miss Viola Davis is going to sit him down and give him his right, and just keeps working on the car, and just such a moment of like, at that time, this is the 80s. Like, that's, a, that's maybe a noteworthy moment in 2022, let alone, or 2023. So, yeah, talk about the subtleness of your character, because that was the thing I loved about well, it. Well, you know, yeah. well, what I wanted to do was bring dignity and levity to Mr. Jordan. I mean, obviously, I've seen video of him. I'm, I've seen him with his son, father that's proud of his son, a, 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 a man that's protective of his wife. And then that's when I said that whole thing about, you know, Dolores, you know, call me if you need me, you know. It's kind of let her go do her thing because I know she could do her thing. But I wanted her to know that I'm there and I'm just going to do what I normally do in the course of the day. He was just a simple man, uh, you know, blue collar guy. And so I just wanted to depict that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just have to get Ms. Viola Davis to talk about the beauty of that masculinity because that is literally the most, you know what I mean? <laughs> like that is real masculinity and just talk about like again playing that dynamic of a couple on screen and just the, the ways that that, that that was for you guys to do together. Well let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. That is our dynamic in real life. You know. I mean I didn't know but I hope. Julius you know, <laughs> has told me since you know we got together he said B. Now, when you come home and it's late at night, you make sure you don't get out of that car until the gates close. And if someone's following you, you lay on that horn, and I'm going to come out with my baseball bat yeah. and I'll put yeah. it on yeah. their yeah. ass. Yeah. I'll, put that, I'll put that baseball in. And, you know, I laid on the horn once by accident. <laughs> Coming home at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I counted to 5. Julius came out with the baseball bat, and I knew. I was like, that's it. I'm going to marry him. <laughs> this is my dude. <laughs> I love this so much. Oh, I do. I do love that. I've seen you already on red carpets talking about him. I'll never forget. Y'all check the Suicide Squad quote. She was calling him out. He's like, Julius will be there. Don't be sending me nothing. I do love it. <laughs> I remember that quote. Um, Mr. Marlon Wayne, sir, I first of all loved you in this. It was such a great portrayal. Um, it was great because I think the last film I saw you in was when I saw you working on Respect, which was another, another great role. But what was crazy about your character, a nanny character, the, per the man that you're portraying in real life, is when I went to go look it up preparing for this press conference, it was like learning about Hamilton. It's like, he did that, yeah. and he did this, and he was there. What was it like for you? Um, was that all there baked into the script? Did you go on a discovery journey of your own? Um, I, I was the first one to shoot, so I got the call on, like, Friday, and we were filming on Monday, so... YouTube was my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Crash course on YouTube and George Raveling. You know, I learned a lot about him. I learned he was a, a fantastic man. Like he has a, him, he himself a, a, he was the first like black coach to win like a national championship. Yeah. Like um, and he and he coached on the Olympic team and you know he's from Jersey and so I, there was a lot that I kind of picked up and um, when I. I read the, the monologue the, the, and the fact that that was real and that he still has the I have a dream speech like in his possession. I just thought that um, it was an amazing character to play. And, um, you know, the, the more you research, the better you can, you know, you can uh, do in terms of your performance. But what I love was when we went on set, Matt and uh, Ben was like, you know, it's not it's not, we're not impersonating. It's not, but you can bring you to it. And that's always for an actor, the best thing you can do is when I can mix that person with my emotions and what you bring. And uh, then, the, you know, the script was already written so beautifully, but, you know, we got to play. And then mm -hmm. I, you know, I could get out of my head and really um, have fun. And uh, that's what it was. When I left the set, I, I just felt like if every day on that set felt like the first day, that's going to be a magical movie. Yeah, mm -hmm. I will say that. Alex, I want to bring it down to you. First of all, I apologize earlier. I was in my head, like, just saying all of your hyphens, and I <laughs> gave you an extra one. You're not writing this one. No. He did. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You know what? Like, it's intimidating. You're Jason Bourne. Sorry. 
<laughs> I'm trying here. And Miss Viola Davis, it's a lot, okay? I'm kidding, though. No, Alex, I, wanna, I don't want to take away your shine because I read all about what you did with the Blacklist. I know that it's incredible, but it's such an audacious moment. This is your first feature big film, and then mm. to have it be directed and starring with these folks. But I guess, like, it starts with you and the pen, and was this a story that you knew so much about already? The, or did you have to then go on the discovery? Because I don't, are you even an 80s baby? Like, <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. Is, oh, my gosh. I, I'm a 90s <laughs> Chicago kid, which is where the Bulls and Michael yeah. Jordan and that, that connection comes from. But, um, no, look, I came to the story, like everyone else, I was locked up during those first couple months of quarantine watching The Last Dance, and... There's a little five-minute clip uh, about Nike and, and just how Air Jordan came together. And, um, you know, I was at a point in my career where it's, you know, you're trying to write a script that gets noticed. So any sort of, when you can explain the, the movie in one sentence, right, it's a story of, of how Nike got Michael Jordan. It just, it, it, it has that ability. You know, it goes to the top of the pile and people will give it a, a bit more of a chance. But like everything, it comes down to character, right? So the question was, who can be the protagonist and the engine of this movie and finding both, you know, Sonny and Dolores was really what, to me, what elevated it above just, you know, a movie about a shoe and, and, and Michael Jordan. It's finding kind of the human elements in a, a, a very big movie, you know. I kind of call them like big little movies, the little being, this is just a movie about a shoe deal, right? And it takes place over a week or so. Um, and it, it's small in scope, but the big part is when you say, it's about Nike and Michael Jordan, which, you know, you could talk to 100 people on the street and all 100 of them are going to know who Michael Jordan is and, and, and what Nike is. And it, to me, that's what kind of elevates it um, above just a movie about a shoe. And Matt, I will say your character, I don't want to take anything away from what you do as Sonny. Um, I did see you joking about the physical transformation that Ben put you through. That's like your friend. Like, that's yeah. so, he's just like, no, we're going to make you look the way we're going to make you look. But <laughs> more than that, what I thought was great about what you did with him is his, you know, that sort of like uncompromising pigheadedness that you have to have when you want to achieve an impossible dream. That's something that's kind of hard to feel empathetic with sometimes, but you made him such a lovable character. Talk about how you, yeah, just made, like, again, he was that character, but he's also just so rude to everyone at so many points. <laughs> yeah, a lot of it was, it was really there on the page with what Alex wrote. And, and, um, and, and, and Sonny, I, we were really trying to capture the spirit of these people in this time more than anything. Not exactly who said what at exactly what moment. It was really about the, uh, you know, the, and all of these people on the Nike side, independent of one another, have, have talked about this time with such nostalgia. And like, and that's what we were trying to create. Like, and remind people they were the, you know, they were the, the underdog, which is such a weird way to think of Nike now. Um, you know, uh, but before this kind of incredible deal, they really were, um, you know, these kind of renegades, kind of outsiders. And so that was really what we were trying to get. The characters were just all kind of had this uh, incredible infectious energy, I thought, that was really kind of jumping off the page. The script was really quite something. Yeah, again, I want to give it a shout out for the folks that don't know the blacklist is where you can send an unproduced script for folks to take a look at. And then obviously it got to the folks of you guys and Amazon and here we are. And it'll be in theaters April 5th, which that's kind of a Phil Knight story in a way, <laughs> kind of a Dolores story, sort of this audacious and aspirational hope that then sort of comes through. Um, I will say Ms. Viola Davis, Ben Affleck told us that he felt directing you was one of those sort of like impossible aspirational dreams. I guess Matt can co-sign that I idea. I didn't feel that way about directing me. <laughs> 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 but I will say, what was it like for you working with him? Because I do feel obviously actor directors bring an entirely new dynamic, but I will even say, I feel like you had to almost undo all of your years of Juilliard to be less expressive, like to just, mm. to allow yourself to be the character in the sense of her focus and that moments where, uh, even like the moments with Adidas where it's like, I would have made a face, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like have a human moment, but she's just so, I don't know, focused. Well, that's who she is once again, Zen neutrality. That's what I see with this woman, this incredible woman. I don't, she, I wonder if she plays poker. You know, but um, she did. <laughs> she really did. No, I mean, this, this deal was like the greatest yeah. poker game yeah, ever played. Yeah, she I played mean, the greatest hand of poker of all I time. I mean, I just don't. But you know what? Here's the thing with Ben and Matt, but Ben is you trust him. Mm. There's a lot of times you go on set, you don't trust anyone because 
truth be known, there's a lot of people in our profession who don't know what they're doing. <laughs> I mean, and I'm not saying that from any kind of place of condescension or, or giving anyone shade. I, I really, but you know, everyone sees a result of a movie or a career, but they don't see the journey. And it, it's the journey, it's the process where you see the artistry. Mm -hmm. The people who actually know what they're doing, who know how to piece it together, know what they want, know what they're seeing in the camera that's not working, knowing how much, how little. And oftentimes, I've had a 40-year career where I've trusted certain people and they have done me wrong because <laughs> you don't always see it you you, you do need help yeah. sometimes i i trusted him i trust what he saw i trusted his process i trusted his choice even in actors that they were going to deliver you know and then you have to ultimately trust that he chose you for a reason because that's the one thing that <laughs> training school beats out of you is any <laughs> sense of confidence <laughs> and level of <laughs> mental health. So, um, but yeah, trust is what I'll say. Mm -hmm. I, I do, I do love that. Um, mm -hmm. Matt, I'm going to bring this question to you as a producer because, again, we talked in this last one about Austin and the reception that you all went down there. This, after I saw the film, the first thing I thought immediately is I wanted to give it to my dad, who is a sports fanatic. I know both you and Ben are really big into sports, but the thing I also wanted to do is I knew I could Trojan horse my mother to yeah. go with my dad to this movie very much because of what you're doing obviously Miss Viola Davis but the way you guys made the film and making it that had to be part of just the initial thing of what you wanted to do when you were producing it though to make it feel like a big crowd pleaser even though it's a smaller story yeah I mean I'm bringing my kids to the premiere today, <laughs> you know? and no and, and and it's totally appropriate for them it's a, it's it really is one of those kind of uh, stories that comes along and you go wow this is really for everybody and um, it's you know we used to call them I guess feel-good movies you know um, but that's that's really what you know what it is it should you should leave the theater with a really uh, with 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 a kick you know like a like a skip in your step you know I definitely feel that um, I def before we get out again we mentioned it in the last one but I also have to ask you all I know the reception down in Austin uh, was just off of the charts. I just have to ask you, is that, that's not your first Austin premiere. You've obviously maybe been down there before. No, that was my first one. Oh, okay, well then I have to ask you, what was it like being a Beatle for... <laughs> for it was the... incredible. I, I, could, I knew we were in good shape when Viola, when Viola walked on screen and the crowd went crazy. I was like, oh, this is good. This is, <laughs> is going to be good. Um, yeah, it was really cool. And, and it felt like... You know, I've been to so many film festivals, and that one just felt like everyone was like so excited we were there, so excited for the movie. Mm -hmm. There was just a great energy in the room. It just was, it, it, it was, I'll never forget it. I'll, uh -huh. I'll, I'll never forget mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And that's just to say, I obviously have been cheering for you like that as just a journalist and whatever, but I have to imagine it's not very often that you can feel like that's like a Beyonce, like superstar Taylor Swift type reception. What was that like for you to experience? Awesome. You know, Julius is an Austinite. I'm an Austinite. I did not know that. Born and bred. So it was cool being a lot back of family the, members. Back at the place. Yes. <laughs> I didn't see many of my family members, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but the reception was awesome. Oh it was it was incredible. Electric. Electric. Oh. Well, I, I, I definitely, again, I, I, I think it's one of those things where you can't see it, but you have to experience it. But again, both audiences and critics are all loving it. Also, Marlon, before we get out of here, too, I, I want to give this. You said you did this in just an, a weekend of studying for it. But the thing I would say about that is the Martin Luther King aspect of it, did you, was that part of it, too? Like, just that sort of his activism and, and sort of the other stuff that he did, was that part of that research? And I'd love for you to talk about that, because he was more than just a coach. He really was somebody that was an advocate for both athletes and just professionals that, that straddled both. Yeah, he was, a, he was, Raveling's an amazing, amazing dude with an amazing story. And, um, you know, he actually was, at a young age, down there at that, um, not that march, but at that, uh, that's when Martin was at that rally. And, um, you know, he had a long, long career of that. And, um, you know, just to be able to know you're doing a movie about, I mean, it's such a small part, but they say there's no such thing as small, small roles, only small actors. Um, it, with this one, it was a small but pivotal, ro pivotal, ro pivotal role. Um, if you feel it when you, when you look at the script and you go, I got to do this. You know, so many times you think about a scene, you're like, I ain't. 
mm -hmm. in the scene, but then you look at the meat within the scene and the character that you're portraying, and then you look at the whole picture and you just go, it's something I have to do. There is no, there is no way you, you don't do something like this. So opportunity to play with all these, you know, all these legends and, um, you know, just go bring your best you. And it was a great scene. And I'm very, very proud that I'm to be a part of this picture. Oh. Again, Matt, before we get out of here, too, um, I, I want folks to see this film so much. It's, it's very intriguing, but I think it's going to surprise them. I think it's going to surprise them how funny it is. I think it's going to surprise them the, the very important themes it delves into. What would you say for maybe folks that are coming into this? Maybe they're not even going in for Michael Jordan or the sports, or maybe, you know, I don't know who these people are. They aren't going for Viola Davis or you and Ben. What would you say is something about this film that will surprise them when they come to see it in theaters? Well, if you don't like Viola and, <laughs> and me and Michael Jordan <laughs> I mean, and Ben, and it, you probably shouldn't go. Fair. <laughs> that fair. would be the only. No, I, I really do think there's something for everybody in this one. Um, it, it, it's not a strictly sports movie. You know, I think for sports aficionados, they'll love the kind of behind the scenes, behind the curtain type of uh, stuff that's in here. But, but it really, uh, you know, um, I, I think has surprised a lot of the people who weren't expecting it. It sneaks up, it sneaks up on you because it, you know, the, because of the role that Viola plays and um, how she kind of takes over the movie. And it, it's just, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 I do think there would be something for, for, for everybody in this one. You just feel good. <laughs> no, you yeah. leave the movie and you feel good as a human with a everyday like just mm -hmm. story of we all have dreams we all have something that we want to do everybody tells us we cannot do it mm -hmm. and just the fact that this man made that happen you know and look at the iconic thing that was spawned from that michael jordan signing with nike mm -hmm. to this shoe to this brand to this this thing that changed pop culture and you know in, in a, a, a huge way i just think it's it's a very powerful movie and it started with something small like a person with an idea and a gut feeling to make something happen yep. and we all mm -hmm. as people every artist up here had an inspiration, a gut feeling about mm -hmm. what we wanted to do in this lifetime, and everybody telling us no, and we every day make it happen. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah, well said. Well that said. was awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Yeah, brother. and on that note. That's the same note, way the yeah. set was. Yeah. <laughs> on that note, we're going to call it to close. I want to thank all of you. I want to thank all of you for watching in Amazon Studios and remind everyone that air will be in theaters April 5th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.